Well, greetings, my sisters, and welcome to another segment of This Is My Story. We share women's stories of life and journey to purpose, and our theme for February is Unsung Shiro, Living in the Shadows of Prominence, featuring stories of African-American women, as well as biblical women. Uh, and for those who did not uh, get their proper recognition for the awesome things they contributed to various causes or success of others. And tonight our guest is none other than missionary Dr. Sharon Busby, who will give a presentation on the life of Marjorie Stewart Joyner. And we will be uh, seeing that presentation uh, right after our prayer and our uh songs of devotion. So at this time, we'll be led in prayer by Reverend Cleora Williams. Hold on one second, Reverend Williams. I'm going to mute everybody to make sure that we don't have any distractions. Hold on one second. And then you can unmute yourself to come in. Okay. Reverend Williams, oh, we'll leave us in right. prayer. <laughs> Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you, God, for being the God that you are. We praise you, God, that you are almighty and that you do all things well. We thank you, God, for this program of the unsung sheroes. And we thank you for the facilitator, Sister Morrison, who diligently works with the Zoom camera and the YouTube and the emails and all the other forms of media that she sends out to let us know about the things that are happening on This Is My Story. Dear God, we pray for our speaker that is going to be on tonight, Missionary Busby. Give her instant recall of all the things that she has already studied for through your Holy Spirit. She can do abundantly above and beyond all that we can ever ask or think. And then, dear God, we also thank you for those listeners that are on here now and those that are to come and those that will listen to the replay. And we pray that it will resonate deep down in their spirit to enlighten them and to enhance their memory of all things that have gone on during this Black history and beyond. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Amen. Thank you so this much. This is Mildred. This uh, is Mildred. Sister Mildred. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, so, and can I, mean, I just say something before we get started? Uh, that's Pastor Donna Hawkins on here with us from Paducah, Kentucky. Okay, man. Amen. Thanks amen. Well, Pastor amen. Hawkins. Amen. Sister Mildred, what, did you have something you was trying to say or? No, I'm just glad to be on here and listen to a dynamic message. Amen. About Amen. a famous person. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if we ask just everybody to keep your uh, audio muted until time for dialogue, okay? We appreciate you all being here tonight. Uh, what we're going to do now is read our scripture. Our scripture is Galatians 6, chapter, verses 9 and 10. This is the King James Version. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in see due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And we thank the Lord for his word is blessed. At this time, we'll have a, a video musical by C.C. Winans, Believe for It. I know a lot of us are walking by faith. And not by sight, and we're believing for the Lord to do a miracle in each and every one of our lives. They say this mountain. This is my story. We had uh, someone on here that prayed and ministered during that time and spoke life into the lives of those that was on the line and she received it by the help of the Lord and through faith she received her healing and we're talking about none other than missionary 
uh, Sharon Busby. We thank the Lord for her being a part of this community uh, <clears throat> consistently. And she has brought a lot of people into uh, coming on to This Is My Story and to be a part of this gathering. And so we're going to introduce her tonight, uh, Missionary Sharon Annie Busby was born in Louisville, Kentucky, but raised in Eminence, Kentucky. She grew up in the First Baptist Church of Eminence, pastored by Dr. W.H. Goatley Sr. And she became a missionary in 2002. In 2015, she joined Burnett Avenue Baptist Church of Louisville, Kentucky, pastored by Dr. Daniel Corey Scholl. She's currently the president of the Missionary Ministry at Burnett Avenue Baptist Church as of January 2022. And she is also a board member of the Central District Women's Missionary Ministry. And we know that we have quite a bit of them on the line tonight, uh, as well as many of the missionaries at Burnett Avenue. And uh, so we do thank the Lord for Missionary Busby. She's going to share tonight uh, about this wonderful another woman that is a shero and uh, her the one that she's presenting tonight is Marjorie Stewart Joyner Marjorie Stewart Joyner I had the privilege of hearing her share about her so I thought we would have her share again on here tonight on this is my story so we just ask that you sit attentively as she shares after she shares we'll come back in for dialogue missionary Sharon Busby Thank you, Sister Catherine. I appreciate the introduction. Hello, everyone. And thank you all for getting on. I've got a lot of people Hello. from, from uh, um, Burnett Avenue, from got family on here and uh, Central District. So thank you all for coming. As you know, this is uh, Black History Month. Yeah, to me, Black History Month should be every month, but that's just, and Catherine has a theme of unsung heroes. So the lady that I'm going to be featuring tonight is going to be Marjorie Stewart Joyner. She was a, a, a businesswoman. She was a hair care entrepreneur. She was a, an educator. She was an activist. Her invention was the permanent wave machine. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory on her. She was the daughter of George Stewart, who was a school teacher. Her mother, Annie Stewart, she was a housewife. She was also the granddaughter of a slave and a white slave owner. In 1904, she and her family moved to Dayton, Ohio. Three years later, her parents split up. So she, because of that, she had to stay with various relatives between Ohio and Virginia. Also, let me go back and put and give you her birthday. Her birthday was October the 24th, 1896. So anyway, she uh, was staying with different relatives and stuff. And then in 1912, she went to Chicago to stay with her mother. There she became fascinated with cosmetology. So, um, she started going to a school by the name of A.B. Moeller Cosmetology School. After that, she, she graduated from cosmetology school being the only and first Black to ever graduate from that particular school. After she graduated from the school, she opened her own salon. Also during that time, she met and married Robert Joyner. Now he was a podiatrist and they ended up having two daughters, Annie and Barbara. During the time when she was in Chicago, she met Madam C.J. Walker. 
and she started working for her. So she became like a sales representative. She also would oversee about 200 of her beauty schools. She would uh, train the door-to-door -door salesmen. And she would also, she had also trained about 15,000 stylists of Madam C.J. Walker's. That's pretty good. I mean, she wore many hats as far as that was concerned, plus her own business as well. So later on, she decided, well, I'm going to try to find an easier way to curl hair. And her inspiration was a pot roast. She was cooking a pot roast at the time, and she was using these little paper rollers. And she thought, hmm, I might be able to to do something with this. So using those paper rollers, she decided, well, I'm gonna make this wave machine. But first she had to build this table because she wanted to be able to, to straighten and curl hair through wrapping. So she was the one responsible for people wrapping hair. By wrapping the hair, the hair would stay longer. It will stay for days. So she decided to do that. So once she did that, she started in on her permanent wave machine. Well, a lot of the customers were saying that it was uncomfortable at first. So she said, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to make it a little bit better. So she used sort of like um, a scalp protector. So that worked pretty good with that. So she applied for a patent and they were saying that she was the first black to ever black woman to ever have a patent, but that was disputed and it was not true. Um, it was disputed first by Sarah Good. Sarah Good was a black woman and she was the first to ever receive a patent. Now, Marjorie got her patent in 1928. Sarah Good got her patent in 1885. Now remember, she wasn't born until 1896. So there was no way that that could happen. Then, after that, as far as Sarah Good, yes, she was the first, but there was one before her. Okay, Sarah Good got hers in 1885. Judy Reed got hers in 1884. She had made a, a need machine that needed bread. So, but the thing about her is she was illiterate. So she could only put an X on the patent. That was why she wasn't credited for being the first. But she was the first, but she wasn't credited for it because she, she couldn't sign her name and Sarah Good could sign her name. So therefore she got credit for it. But anyway, she went on and got her patent. But when she received her patent, her patent had Madam C.J. Walker's mm -hmm. name on it. Didn't have her name anywhere. Now, you don't expect to get stabbed in the back by your own people. <laughs> but this is what happened. What Madam C.J. Walker did was she put a clause in her bylaws <laughs> that stated that if anyone who was under her employ invented anything, then that was credited to her. So Marjorie, she didn't fight it. She could have, but she didn't see. At that particular time, 1928, Madam C.J. Walker was already dead. 
She died in 1919 at the age of 51. Her daughter took over, but she they never did change those bylaws. So she never got credit and she never got any money. And the state never even offered her any money. Now, you know, Madam C.J. Walker was a self-made millionaire. Had plenty of money, had hundreds of schools. She had factories all over the place, but she did not, no. She got no money from that. But she went on, she was like, okay. But then after she got the patent, there was another man who disputed her. His name was Carl Nestler. He was from England and he had made a, a machine back in 1909, similar to hers. But his machine was really very difficult to work and very uncomfortable. So basically she perfected it and made it a whole lot better. So she, she finally, even though she did not get the, her name on the patent, she still invented the machine. Okay. So later on down the road um, in 73, her husband died. So she decided that she was gonna go back to school. So she went and enrolled into Bethune College and uh, she got her bachelor's in psychology. She was 77 years old. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, she got her flowers though before she passed. Even though she went through some difficult times, eventually she, you know, but had notoriety. They they finally claimed her as being the inventor of that particular machine. So back in 87, uh, the Smithsonian Institute had a, a replica of her machine exhibited, plus a replica of the first salon that she owned. So in spite of all that she went through with the bad of CJ Walker, she still got recognized. She didn't have to do anything. She could have, but she didn't. She, she let God handle that. And so she was recognized. And also uh, in 1990, Chicago recognized her. On October the 24th, they, they named it Marjorie Stewart Joyner Day. Okay, so she did get her flowers before she passed. She died on December the 27th, 1994. At home, she had heart failure. She was 98 years old. You know, I used to see her on TV at some of these programs and stuff and her hair was always late. You know, remember she had white hair and it was beautiful. You know, it, it, sometimes she had worn an afro, but most of the time she had those waves going in her hair and it was just beautiful. But she did get recognized and I was glad about that, but there are a lot who don't get recognized. And the reason is because, you know, on the back then on the patent, on the form, there was no place for you to put gender or race. So a lot of the women got by with patents by just putting their first initial and their last name. That way they didn't know whether they were male or female or black and white or white. So they got a lot through by doing that. But then afterwards, then you've got to market it. And you know they wouldn't buy from a black. 
So they would have to either sell it to a white man or a female in order to, to manufacture this. So of course, by selling it, they sold it for a little of nothing and they received nothing. That's the way things went back then. A lot of the women, even the white women, they were having trouble, you know, as far as patents were concerned. Uh, but now, I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot different, but back then there were so many black, especially women who created and invented so many things that we did not get credit for. I mean, you think about this. Do you really think that Harlan Sanders was in the kitchen frying chicken? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. That recipe of 11 herbs and spices belonged to a black woman. And he only gave her $100. Look at how many billions he has made from all of that. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, it's been a journey, a journey. We, our people have really gone through a whole lot. But Marjorie Joyner was an unsung hero. That's all I have. <laughs> Well, that is wonderful. We can, you all can unmute yourselves and come in and, and just give a lot of hand praise for what she shared so far. Uh, and it's a lot of it's the truth. I mean, it's really the truth and what she's sharing. Awesome. Uh, great information that she has shared on here her, and really has revealed a lot of what's really going on. And it's still going on today. It's a lot of women are not being recognized for their accomplishments. Uh, and and are being deceived, you know, going through uh, an area of being deprived, and then there's a lot of deception going on, even from the legal standpoint, and um, and so it's just really amazing how that is. And she's really shared a lot of good information about that, and even bringing in about Madam Walker and the other ones uh, as well. And I, I don't know if a lot of you have seen that uh, movie, A Self Made Millionaire. Uh, it's a movie. I think it's on Netflix. Um, about Madam Walker, which is a great uh, movie and a great depiction of exactly what happened during that time. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see how the hands changed and then how she, uh, you know, kind of just, I think she just kind of sold, sold her down the, down the river as far mm -hmm. as what was hers. And it's bad because it's still going on today. A lot of the women, we don't really support each other like we should. We should really be supporting each other and, and giving each other accolades, especially women, because we have enough hard time being women, especially women in leadership or women in the forefront of a lot of things, uh, uh, you know, just by, by being women, you know, general that tries to put forth an effort to do anything successful. We always have it hard, whether you're a black woman or a white woman, women in general, you know, but especially the African American women. And so I wanna give way for a dialogue right now. If anybody has anything that they wanna share, comment on, or even give, uh, have questions about uh, at this particular time, you just unmute your audio and just uh, come in, you know, and, and share. It's a great presentation. The thing about Missionary Busby, she she un, she uh, studies it, and then she shares it by memory. I mean, you would think she's <laughs> you would think she's reading the whole thing, but she shares it by memory, and uh, she puts it puts herself to that place where I've got to memorize this. So really, it becomes a part of her. So as she's sharing it, uh, she's almost like giving you the movie itself. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll take it from beginning to end and you can just see every part coming together, every part being played out, you know, even to the end. She narrates it uh, very well and it is by memory. So I really commend her for that. I mean, you know, I, I have to write everything down. <laughs> 
most time to make sure I'm on point because I'll just tend <laughs> to lose thought or lose a train of thought or go somewhere else. I said, I got to keep, keep keep everything in line, <laughs> put my outline down so I won't miss anything. And I have to credit my missionaries for that because uh, when I started doing it for them, it was only supposed to, to be Black History Month. Uh -huh. I liked it so well, they wanted it every month. <laughs> so now I do a Black History Corner and I've been doing all women for uh -huh. three years now. Uh huh. So now I'm starting to do men. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So anybody wants to share at this time? I've seen that um, I'm Miss Cooperwood. Uh -huh. I've seen that the lady was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But you know, back then, they didn't look at it like that, but it was. Uh -huh. She was an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, yes. 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 But she was a business woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. So she had a mind and a vision of what she wanted to do. And then she put it into action, even though other people grabbed a hold of it and kind of went on, but stole the ideas or, you know, did some other things under their name when really it was, it was her vision and her idea. Anybody else? Well, I think she was a pioneer because of the fact that in those days, women but did not get recognized and get, like you mentioned, uh, Sharon mentioned uh, having a patent. Mm -hmm. and they, really, um, they were just second, considered second class citizens, and we were probably considered third or fourth class citizens when, uh, mm -hmm. compared to the white woman. So I thought yeah. she was very brave to do what she did. And then she went back to school. That's another thing, too. Education is very important. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but it is. It so I is. Think that was uh, on her part. To me, that was uh, that was that was a great thing to do. And then she was in her seventies. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're yes. never yes. too old to learn. That is so true. That is so true. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people have ideas for a long time, and then finally mm -hmm. they, you know, say, "Okay, well now I think I'm I can do this." Because a lot right. of times we have a lot of things going on in your life. Mm -hmm. And it may kind of distract you from, from, from doing your purposes or your dreams. And then once you're at a place of settleness, you know, it's like, okay, I've got the time now. Why not? That's why mm -hmm. a lot of people go back to school, they get their degrees in their seventies, you know, yep. really accomplish it. So mm -hmm. uh, purpose is not predicated upon age. And that's a good thing. It is not predicated upon age, mm -hmm. purpose, and, and even ideas, all of that is not predicated upon age. Well, plus she actually went, she went into a whole different field. She went into uh -huh. psychology. Psychology, uh -huh. yes. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She did. So she still was in purpose. Right. Uh, still in purpose. Creative on one end and then, uh, you know, the purpose on another end mm -hmm. as far as ministering to the needs of people or the community, mm -hmm. which was awesome. Uh, Sister Muirhead? You have to unmute yourself. Okay. I was thinking about when uh, missionary Beatty, is that pronounced it right? Busby. Busby, I'm sorry. Okay, anyways, when she was talking, it came to my mind, um, I think it was by Maya Angelou, this yeah. too shall rise. And um, her, even though she was uh, taken advantage of, she was able to get her information to Smithsonian and, you know, and go on and get her uh, degree. And like I said, when uh, you were talking, it just came to me about Maya Angelos. This too shall rise. Uh -huh. She said, I will rise. Yeah, she I did. will rise. She yes, I will rise. I will rise. Uh -huh. <laughs> Missionary Busby, you did a wonderful job in presenting uh, Marjorie Stewart. I had not heard of her, and I appreciate mm -hmm. sharing that wisdom with us uh, that she wrote 
a hidden figure in history. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we can appreciate what they had to go through. And I, I was, uh, that was my first hearing about how my, Madam C.J. Walker sort of stiffed her. Yes. Uh, that, you know, those things happen. And they happen today. That's why people have to be careful about, um, I hope you can hear that. I don't know. I'm having some kind of issues with my, mm -hmm. my, um, you know, I think it's something going on with Zoom because I was watching another mm -hmm. program and they had about two or three people that were on Zoom and they had that same technical mm -hmm. issue. It's something with Zoom. It really is. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, it was, I uh, enjoyed well. it. And thank you for presenting it. And uh, it, it behooves all of us to get astute as far as our business, like, uh, that this this happened way back then. Uh, a lot of times, you would take uh, slaves would invent things, and their slave owners would get patent for it. Uh -huh. And then, uh, then after slavery, a uh, black man would invent something, and then uh, a white man would come along and say, "Well, let me help you. I'll get it. You know, I'll get it. And I'll get it. I'll, well, they get the money for it. You say these mm -hmm. So, and today you see athletes." Yes. If they got, if they don't keep up with their finances, somebody who's managing their finances, before mm -hmm. they know it, they don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. well, it's that important is true. for us to behoove ourselves to be, uh, to be to get financially savvy and be mm -hmm. able to take care of our own business. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Because it's easy to put your business in someone else's hand, especially if you're busy, uh, say, for instance, artists, you know, that sing or uh, musical artists or anyone, actors or whoever. And it's easy to say, OK, well, I'll let my CPA handle this and, and, and you know, uh, hopefully they handle it, you know, with, you know, with good intentions and good care. But should, should something come up missing or something come up not totally correct? by you staying in touch with them because people are human. It's not that people deliberately make mistakes, but people are human. And so there are mistakes that may be made, but if you're walking along with them and stay in touch, you know, with that side, the business side of what you're doing, I think that helps you a whole lot, but some people just turn it over. Uh, I think the group um, TLC did that. They had, um, they had a, a business deal with, uh, I don't know if it was Capital Records, and uh, they just went about because they plus they were young and they just went about, uh, you know, singing their music and um, and writing their music and performing. And they was out on tours all the time, but not knowing that they really wasn't getting a part of the money that was really theirs, royalties and all that, all of that, because they didn't understand the business side. And then they went bankrupt. But yeah. you see them in the public. I mean, um, you know, the, yes, Peebles and L.A. Reid, I mean, same thing. Uh -huh. You see them in the public a lot, and you're thinking, wow, they're making it. You see them all touring, and all just like Rihanna, I think, was just on the, uh, uh, what do you call it, on the um, Super, Super Bowl, Bowl. Yes, you know, Bowl. and all those that were with her and all of that, uh, but, but it looked like she's up on the business side of things, as well as her own business uh -huh. of, of cosmet cosmetics and all that. You know, but you have to stay in touch with that CPA, know what's going on, you know, with the business side of anything that you do, anything that you do. Uh, and I'll tell you another another show that is really good that I watch a lot, and that is Shark Tank. Shark Tank is a good show to watch if you are an entrepreneur, <laughs> because when you go on Shark Tank, you have got to have your numbers in order and you got to be able to spit them off just like that. So you can't just be guessing and thinking, OK, I think I made this much last year and, and I see our projections now, you know, and I see some people out here that are financially savvy, that are CPAs and things. <laughs> that are good in recording, you know, records and keeping up with that. But uh, when you go on Shark Tank, you know, they, they'll give you the money if, if they're interested in your product, but you got to know what you're doing too. You got to know what you're doing too. So anybody in here that is entrepreneur, you have ideas, make sure you get that idea patented and you can get that patent through the um, Library of Congress. You, you just Google Library of Congress and uh, they'll have forms in there where you can send your patent in, your ideas. If you write songs, uh, if you uh, write poems, 
uh, books, whatever it is that you do, you can get those patented as well as copywritten to protect your work. And you have proof right then that it was yours in case it comes up in court later on. Yeah, I've had to do that. I wrote a book and I did that. I had mm -hmm. uh, I went to the Library of Congress and had all that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That's good. You got mm -hmm. to. You got to protect yourself. Yeah, you, you do. Protect yourself. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Any comments or questions, Dr. Crook? Did you? Yes, I have a comment. And Missionary Busby, thank you uh, so much. <clears throat> there were a lot of takeaways on what you said to us. One important thing I want to say, and that is the importance of being financially savvy, and even though you may not have the time to look at your own finances, you must do that. I'm a CPA, but I don't even do my own taxes because I'm a second person looking at something and other things that are actually you may not know about. The important thing I want to also point out, and that is the importance of mentoring young ladies and, and uh, uh, boys too, but it's particularly young ladies as we uh, study the unsung sheroes. We have to actually start talking to them when mm -hmm. they are preschoolers, junior high schoolers, but sometimes if they get into 1920, whatever, other races or cultures may have a jump on them because they're teaching them the value of money, teaching them the value of, of um, just the whole concept of mathematics. You have to start telling our young people that mathematics at different degrees is difficult, is hard. Mm -hmm. But if they understand where the mathematics come from, it's a part of our culture. Reading is a part of our culture. And so we have to kind of get back into self-educating the young people outside of the school system because the curricular is changing and mm -hmm. you can't even teach the things regarding black history and those in the school system as you once could. So mm -hmm. that's why even the churches and leaders and the sororities and other groups in the different cultures must get back to not leaving education up to other groups and other races. We have to start teaching and taking the time to, I don't even like using the word volunteer because when you volunteer, you think that I just do it in my time. Mm -hmm. I like the idea as Christian women, we are servants. And anytime you are servant, it's not at your own pleasure time or whether we are serv servants of the Lord. And we have to give account and we have to give account for that. So if we are servants, we have to look at our role yes. as I have to do it as unto the Lord making time that is convenient for the clients and the, uh, the people that the Lord has assigned us to work with. So mm -hmm. that, that was just my comment on uh, what was said, but I really thoroughly enjoyed uh, you, Mr. Busby, and I had not heard of uh, Marjorie Jordan or Eva. Mm -hmm. That's good. That is good, mm -hmm. Dr. Cook, especially dealing with the mentorship. It is so important that we mentor uh, and train and equip uh, our young people to come up and give them knowledge, you know, as well as wisdom. We can really give them a lot of wisdom to keep them from making some of the mistakes that we may have made or just didn't know that we know now and sharing it. That is so important. Anybody else? Well, Sister Morrison, I'd like to say that listening to Missionary Busby in her presentation, it shows us that persistence pays off. A lot of times people will give up when things don't, don't work out, but mm -hmm. you know, you have to stay with it a lot of times. It reminds me of the scripture, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ with strength mm -hmm. in me. Uh -huh. And so when we stay with it and be persistent, it may take a little time, but if you keep on working, God will see you through. That's good. That is so true. Mm -hmm. That's how things are accomplished because they're persistent. They are yes. persistent in seeing it happen. That is so good. And they really had to be in those days because they didn't have those kind of laws. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Now you have them. I mean, you have more freedom to do those kind of things that we're talking about because mm -hmm. of the laws. Mm -hmm. but back then, they didn't have that. They, that was, they didn't have them. That's Back true. then, they were taken advantage of quite a bit because of the fact that they could not read or write. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And that's another thing, mm -hmm. too. We have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to be prepared. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. But even in not being able to read or write or any, any of that, too, because I'm sure when she created that machine, mm -hmm. uh, maybe she just did it by by knowing, but somebody had to take it and put a schematic to it. I mean, yes, a specific type of plan, uh, engineering it, you know, making sure it was engineered yeah. properly and all of that. So somebody had to be able to take that and do it, that knew how to read and write, put right. the numbers what, to it. Uh -huh. put input, the numbers yeah, education is very important. We just it can't is. Do. It is. Oh, Definitely. my God. Mm. Most of the people that I have done, I have seen their plan uh, as far as their machines they've written up. And like you said, they had to have somebody, if they couldn't read or write, to write this up. You know, mm -hmm. some type of engineer or somebody drafting something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they had to. They had mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. It done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yes, thank you, Missionary Busby, for the wonderful presentation, awesome, always, always. And uh, just hearing those presentations, it helps us to advance to what we can be, even though we face a lot of challenges still. We've come a long way, but we still face a lot of challenges, but it does help us uh, to challenge ourselves and to do better so that we can achieve the goal that we want to do. And, mm -hmm. and, and like, uh, I think it was uh, Sister Crooks was saying, uh, mentor the young people so that they can start now being whatever they aspire to be. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's really wonderful. I, I, I like the ongoing fact that you do Black history all the time, not yes. just in February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome. That's good. It's keeping people educated and it keeps it before us um, how, how blessed that we are as a people and our creativity and everything. It does not just go away. It stays before us as she does it each month. Amen. I think I see Sister um, your head, your head again. Yeah, I was just going to say, I may be someone off, but I was, uh, I don't, uh, the uh, Channel 5 News, the national news, uh, I was impressed with this Black young girl sign language, and when she went on, um, she's an actress on uh, Abbott Martin, was singing the National Black Anthem. Mm -hmm. And um, they had this black girl um, doing sign language when, um, oh, I got, but anyways, it was just impressive. That's all I got to say. It was just, it was very inspiring just to see uh, a young black girl doing sign language during the, the National Black Anthem when it was being sung. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was Cheryl Lee Raff who was singing it. Yeah, Shirley yeah. Raff was singing. Shirley Raff was singing it, and then the young lady was doing the sign language. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Shirley Raff, she just got an award. She got an Emmy. Yeah, they uh -huh. they really walked with the hardware this time, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Uh -huh. <laughs> they yeah. walked with that hardware this time. I tell yeah, you. they did. Yeah. You know, a lot of times they're excluded. So yeah. Yeah. Some of these if you don't speak yeah. up, you know, like mm -hmm. John Lewis says, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. We think we want to be money mouth and thinking it's going to get us somewhere, but we have to be, sometimes we have to be aggressive or assertive to get what That's we true. need. That's true. And speaking That's of John true. Lewis, we've got a situation here in Nashville where they are mm -hmm. trying to change the John Lewis way to, to part of it to now the Donald Trump. What is it? The Donald Trump way? I have, help me out here in Nashville. Oh, no. Yeah, they're trying to change it. And so there's a young girl that has risen up and she said, this is not going to be, she was there at the March when they first, uh, you know, uh, did the sign 
up when they instituted the sign on the, uh, mm -hmm. I guess the celebration and the ceremony of when they put the John Lewis way uh, down on Broadway, I think it's what yeah. fifth and Broadway part of it like. Right. And uh, she rose up and she, I think Channel 2 um, um, has gotten a hold of that. And she is uh, putting together a, um, it's like a, I guess, what do you call it? Not a march, but it's a, um, a protest, a protest Saturday. And she's a young girl. So she's asking all young people to come out and have a discussion about that, about them trying to change the John Lewis way to part of it to now the Donald Trump street mm -hmm. away or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Just trying to defame and take away anything. That man has really served uh, in, in the marches and then uh, you know the different things as far as the civil rights and all of that suffering. Yeah, he and almost everything. lost his life. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. And now yeah. they're trying to take that away. I'm like, how terrible is that? So, you know, it's just, it's, it's really just, really just crazy. Just like you just can't yep. have anything. You want to take everything away from us. Mm -hmm. But one thing about it is, even if they change it, they can't take away who the man was and what uh -huh. that man has done. They can't take it away mm -hmm. at all. Any other mm -hmm. questions or comments? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Cleo, uh, Ms. Well, Reverend Williams for giving uh letting me know about it because I didn't. So I'm glad I was able to help support Sharon. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm -hmm. hey, man, I think she's been on here before. I remember seeing her. And I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> glad to have everybody on here tonight. Mm -hmm. Anybody Thanks else have anything from like the it. district mm -hmm. to say, uh, Reverend uh, Hawkins, like you said, Reverend Hawkins, or Yes, ma'am. I'm not from the district, but I sure do thank Reverend Williams for including me on tonight. Today has been such a long day. We had a retired teachers meeting that lasted really long. And then I have a prayer call every Monday night for the state of Kentucky. It starts at six, but I'm so glad that I was able to get in on this on tonight. Missionary Busby, God bless you. And yes, you gave us some information that I was not familiar with. Yeah, Madam C.J. Walker, yes, but the lady that you presented tonight, no, ma'am, I was not familiar with, with Sister mm -hmm. Joyner, so I sure thank you for the information that you presented on tonight, and we have to remember that we still have a torch to carry. My yeah. cousin lives in Florida, and you know the governor in Florida doesn't want anything taught about what African Americans have done for this country, and we already know that if it had not been for our ancestors, mm -hmm, this yeah. country would have dissolved right. a long time ago. So we have to stay prayerful. We, we just have to stay Amen. prayerful. God bless you all. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I it. Thank you. Thank you. I, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I am putting my information in the chat. Uh, anyone that uh, would like to receive notification, uh, about our This Is My Story segments. We're on here every Monday, uh, except for holidays, uh, seven o'clock Central Standard Time. So if you want to receive notifications uh, about our segments, just put your uh, email address in the chat and we will definitely add you to our notification list. Also, we uh, also send out the replay um, you know, of every segment. I do have a YouTube channel. And so we will send you the replay of This Is My Story for the Night. You can share it with many people. Uh, and then you will also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, once you're there. And uh, you can click and share and, and also press the button, the bell to be able to be notified immediately whenever I make a post. Now, the post will be uh, of different things, but mostly of This Is My Story will be usually that Monday night. Uh, so you'll see other things. I know people are receiving things of our Sunday school uh, classes, as well as uh, uh, our missionary class uh, meetings and different things like that, which is great. So we're thankful that you come in and view those as well. But for This Is My Story, if if you want to receive a notification through email when we're having our segments, what, who we're featuring and everything, please put your name and your email address in the chat and we will add you to our notification list. And we really appreciate that. And I'm still receiving uh, information. If anyone has any suggestions as far as any future uh, segments that you would like to see, any titles, any any. Uh, 
anything that we can focus on, please uh, yeah, put that in the chat or you can email me and I have my email address as well as my phone number. You could text it to me. Uh, and we just ask you to please visit my website at kmministries.net. You'll see everything about the Catherine Morrison Ministries and everything that we do. We do plan on starting a Royal Queen, the, our Royal Queen Academy for the spring. We'll be starting in April here in Nashville, Tennessee. It is an in-person uh, event. It's like a six-week class that we'll be teaching out of the Book of Esther. I'll let the queen arise. Um, and many of you, some people here, they've already been through that class. It's a six-week class. And uh, at the end of that six weeks, we will have a graduation where you'll receive your certificate of completion, as well as a tiara will be placed on your, on your head to seal the impartation that you received on the class. And then you will, you will have a reception shortly right after the graduation. And so uh, if you want to know more about the Royal Queen Academy, you can visit my website at kmministries.net and you'll get more information about that. We do a uh, tour the uh, Royal Queen Academy so we can come to you in a weekend if you would like to do uh, one at your church within a weekend, like a Friday and a Saturday. We will be like a two-day event and that Saturday we have the graduation as well. So if you're interested in knowing more about it, you can visit my website at kmministries.net which I have the information in the chat and see more about it. Or you can give me a call and we can talk more about it. Just wanted to kind of put all those things out there of what I'm doing. All right, well, we're going to head and close out tonight. Thank you again for coming and being a part. Thank you again, uh, Missionary Busby, for all you do. We'll continue to pray for you. I know she hadn't been feeling well in her body, but she is yet pressing her way. Amen. She's yet pressing her way. So we're going to go ahead and close out. If any other questions or comments about this is my story or anything. Yeah, Sister Morrison, I'm going to, this is Claudia Guerin. I'm going to put my info in again. I had done it before and I haven't been getting the messages, but I've been getting them through Reverend Williams. Okay, please do. I may but, have I, had a, but I put my name in there and my phone number as well as the email. Email, okay. Thank you so much. Chat. Sorry about that. So I don't know it's if maybe okay. I didn't put it in there right or something. <laughs> okay. yeah, she generally tells us anyway, so that's okay. Not fine. That's great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Uh -huh. uh, in the closeout prayer, can we please call uh, the name of Sister Joyce Strong uh, in, in our proposing prayer? Mm -hmm. yeah. healing. Sister Strong for healing. Amen. I thank Sister Cynthia Bess. Uh, Cynthia Merritt is back in the hospital. Remember her in prayer. Uh, Brother Moore, they had to rush him to the hospital. It's just a lot going on. A lot going on. Amen. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and close out in prayer. And uh, we thank you all again for being here. And thank you for your continued prayers for me and my family. Uh, Sister Narkita, did you have anything you had to say? Yes, ma'am. Also, please remember Sister Sandra Bush, as we were getting out right. of service yesterday for 11, for 1115 service, she mm -hmm. got a, a message that her granddaughter had been killed. Right. So please remember Sister Bush and her family. Right. She's normally on here as well, Sister Sandra Bush. Remember her family. Thank you, Sister Narkita, for reminding us of that. Thank you again. Missionary Bus, would you mind closing us out in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for just waking us up. This thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for all the many people that are on here tonight. Bless each one individually with the blessings you feel they stand in need of. Father, I have a special blessing on some of the sick. George Strong, Cynthia yes, Merritt, yes, Sandra Jesus. Bush, yes, Jesus. heal their bodies and comfort them because they've had a loss in the family. Yes, Please, Lord. Father, be with them if you could. Father, thank you also for the shoulders that we stand on. Uh, all the many ancestors that we've had 
yes. that have created and done so much for, for our society. Thank you, Father. I know a lot of them do not get recognized, but thank you for their legacy because they have opened doors for us that we didn't, could not open. So thank you for everything that they have done. Yes, Jesus. These and other blessings I ask in thy name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise of what we've heard tonight. Amen. Amen. All the comments and questions. We just thank the Lord for the sharing again. May God bless each and every one of you. And Lord's willing, we'll see you next Monday for another segment of This Is My Story. God bless you all. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, happy you. Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. 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 Happy Valentine's